In this lesson, we're going to be talking about how to interpret number line models and compare numbers that are on the number line. We're also going to do this by creating a story to go with the numbers. Here I have a number line. And on this number line, I'm representing the location of 5 and negative 10. Now double check the number line, make sure we've got all the parts of the number line shown here. We have a consistent scale, counting by fives, counting by fives. We're going in the right direction for the negatives, opposite of the positives, and they're on the right side. Positive numbers to the right, negative numbers to the left. When you look at a number line, you want to compare the locations of the numbers. I can see that 5 is 5 units to the right of 0. I can see that negative 10 is 10 units to the left of 0. 5 units to the right, Ten units to the left. And both of these are of zero. That's how we talk about the location of numbers on the number line with clarity. If I wanted to write a story problem that tells me about these numbers, the easiest way to do that is decide what zero means. I could have lots of different things that zero could mean. It could be sea level. It could be the freezing temperature of water. It could be a place. It could be school or home. It could be um, how much money someone has, how much money in an account. Lots of things. And the easiest way to do is figure out what zero can be. In this case, I'm going to make zero a place. Okay. I'm going to say zero is the checkpoint. In a race. It's not the finish line. It's the, a checkpoint. It's in the race. Maybe halfway. Halfway to the finish. If someone's running a race and they get to a checkpoint halfway, that means they are going to the end of the race over here. If I were to write a story about two people in a race and this is the checkpoint halfway to the finish, and I say that each of these are some distance. Each unit's going to be some distance. Maybe it's a hundred yards. Say each unit is 100 yards. That means this 5 represents 500 yards. This 10 would be 1,000 yards, 1,500 yards, 2,000 yards, so on. All of my positive numbers would be after the checkpoint. So over here, positive is after the checkpoint. The negative numbers, if the race is going in this direction, would be before the checkpoint. So this would be 500 yards before the checkpoint. 1,000 yards or 1,000 yards before the checkpoint. So if I have two people in a race, I can say that this person is in front of this person, and I know because he is 500 yards after the checkpoint, and this person is 1,000 yards before. That negative is telling us it's before. It's a negative word, the checkpoint. So I could write a story for that. Mark and Sue are competing in a race. Right there, that sentence tells me what's going on in my story. They are both 
close to the halfway checkpoint. Sue is 500 yards past the checkpoint. Mark is 1,000 yards before the checkpoint. There's my story that would go with this diagram. And I started by saying the checkpoint in a race, that my zero was the checkpoint in a race halfway to the finish. That was where I started with my story to understand what was going on. Before I wrote anything, I decided what my positive numbers meant in the story, what my negative numbers meant in the story. Positives are after the checkpoint. Negatives were before the checkpoint. And then I talked about what my units would be here. Each unit is 100 yards. I could have said seconds. Each unit is one second. So this would be five seconds, and this would be 10 seconds. Something that makes sense in the, pro in the story. Then I wrote my problem. Mark and Sue are competing in a race. There's my two points, Mark and Sue. They are both close to the halfway checkpoint. There's my halfway checkpoint. Sue is 500 yards past the checkpoint. That means this would be Sue. 500 yards past, after the checkpoint. Mark is 1,000 yards before the checkpoint. That means this would be Mark. Mark, negative 10 or negative 1,000 yards before the checkpoint. He still has 1,000 to go. In your homework tonight, you're going to use the same problem and write a story problem that is different from this one. Don't use Mark and Sue. Don't use a race. Use something else. Make sure you talk about what your zero is going to be and how many units before and after that zero you're going to be talking about. Remember, some options are you could talk about money. You could talk about someone having $5 and someone owing $10. You could talk about a distance from a location, like in blocks, how many blocks from school. Zero could be your school or your home or the store. It could be a pet store, just like we talked about earlier. Zero can be lots of things. You just have to decide what it is. Here's an example of what we're going to do in class today. We're going to take a look at a story problem and see if the story problem that is written matches the idea that is given in the problem. Right? We're going to defend our stance, whether we agree to see if this story problem matches the problem here, or disagree, and we need to use specific details in our writing. This is how we're going to do it. In this problem, Felicia needs to write a story problem that relates to the order in which the numbers negative 6 and 1 half and negative 10 are represented on a number line. She writes the following. During a recent football game, our team lost yards on two consecutive downs. We lost six and a half yards on the first down. During the second down, our quarterback was sacked for an additional 10 yard loss. On the number line, I represent the situation by first locating negative six and one half. I located the point by moving six and one half units to the left of zero. Then I graph the second point by moving 10 units to the left of zero. Those are the important informations where we need to decide if it's positive or negative. If we move to the left of zero, is that a positive number or a negative number? Does this, repre this problem represent negative six and one half and negative ten. I would say yes, that Felicia did this right. Felicia wrote a correct problem because we always want to say why. We need to support our information. 
here in the problem, she said that six and a half units to the left of zero, that would be negative six and one half. It was negative six and one half and 10 units to the left of zero is negative 10. I know this because negative numbers are to the left of zero. Negative numbers are to the left of zero on a number line. That's how I would answer this question. Okay, that's what we're working on today. Remember, when you look at a number line and you want to describe where the points are or you want to create a story problem about it, you need to define what your zero represents. And positive numbers are to the right of zero. So we could say that this three is three units to the right of zero. And negative numbers are to the left of zero. This negative two and one half is two and one half units to the left of zero. You can use that information to build your story problem. Take a look at your homework, and I'll see you tomorrow in class.